Welcome back to The Hive Doctor, your beekeeping mentor. It's my job to take the guesswork out of beekeeping for you. Today we're going to be talking about what I feel is a pretty ingenious way to seriously cut the Varroa mite population down drastically. It's just one of the four methods that I use and I want to share that with you today, so stick around. So today we're going to be talking about one of the elements that I use to keep Varroa mite in check. And we're going to be digging specifically into this hive here. It's one of the stronger ones in this yard. And I know that they have been working on what I'm about to show you, which is an idea I had over winter time to help cut down on the Varroa mite population and to also increase my beeswax production. So let's go ahead and get into this hive and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this winter I repainted my boxes, cleaned them up from excess propolis and beeswax, and when I put the frames back into my 10 frame hives, I actually put on the second frame in from either end, either side, so one, two, these are medium honey super frames in my deep hive body box. Now I know, I know bees, and they love to build beeswax in large areas greater than three-eighths of an inch. Anything smaller and they like to propolize it. So knowing that they would build beeswax on the bottom of these medium honey super frames, I also knew that they were going to build them into burr comb and in this particular case drone comb and then the queen would come along lay drone eggs in that comb and if you know anything about Varroa mite they, de they love drone comb because they have longer to develop and become more populous in the hive. We're going to pop this box and turn it on end and show you underneath before I actually take any frames out. All right, so what I've got here is we're looking at the underside of the deep hive body box. And I actually got one frame out of place, but that's okay because they still did what I needed them to. Let's see if we can smoke them a little bit so that you can see more clearly what I'm talking about. So right here you see the bottom bar of a frame, another bottom bar, and right here you don't see a bottom bar, but you see comb, honeycomb. Although they're not storing honey in this, the queen is laying brood. This should have been on the second frame in. I misplaced it, no big deal. But over here, we've got it right where it should be. You see this bottom bar, but right here, there's no bottom bar to see because that's a medium honey super frame. But what we do have is some nice drone comb that they have built up and built out. Now I'm gonna put this box back down and remove a frame so that you can see what I'm talking about with Varroa mite control. All right, so I'm gonna move my, remove my outside frame first give myself room to work. I'm gonna pull this frame up nice and slow so I don't roll any bees. And since I've got it out, I'm gonna go ahead and check and just see what their status is. They're, they've got pollen in there, open nectar, more pollen on this side and more open nectar. Setting this frame aside, I'm gonna to work towards the frame that this video is all about. And I call this frame my Varroa control frame. Now you see the medium honey super, uh, the bottom bar, and then you see all that extra drone combs they built on top of that. Some just fell off because of the angle I was holding it at. Now the idea behind this Varroa control frame is on my periodic hive inspections to come along and actually scrape this off the bottom bar. Because there's a high Varroa mite count in drone comb, I have made it to where I can remove this drone comb, thus removing hundreds, if not possibly thousands, of varroa mites in the process. Now I'm going to show you how to scrape this off the way that I do it, and ideally you should have a bucket to scrape it into, and then we'll talk about the ethical implications involved in this, because we are essentially killing drone bees. Okay, so here's our varroa control frame. I've shaken the majority of the bees off back into the hive so that I can scrape this drone comb off without harming bees. So I'm going to hold it and balance it. 
with my hand on the top bar here. And then I'm going to place it on this hive cover on the ground so that I've got appropriate leverage. And then I'm going to take my hive tool and start scraping along the bottom bar, just like so, very slowly, taking my time. And it's going to start to curve and fall off, especially if it's on a warm day. I'm going to continue on and eventually this will fall off and I'm left with my original Honey Super frame, which is packed full of pollen and open nectar. And now I'm going to put this back. And as I do, we'll talk about the goal again and the ethical implications involved. All right, so again, I use medium Honey Super frames as Varroa control frames and I position them one frame in. So the second position from the outside frame. And we just scraped a large portion of drone comb off of this frame because Varroa mite are drawn to incubate and produce inside of drone comb. So I just, by removing that drone comb, just removed hundreds, if not possibly, hopefully, thousands of Varroa mite. And that's just one of the elements that I use to control Varroa mite. Now the ethical implications involved are that I'm killing drone bees. And I'm not going to attempt to justify it, but I will reason out the why I do it, and then you'll have to make the decision whether it's something that you want to do in your operation or not. Now, yes, there is a sacrifice. There's hundreds of drones on that comb that I just shook off. But had I not, then those Varroa mite would have continued to thrive. And yes, I do have other Varroa control methods, but each one adds to the elimination of more and more mites in this hive and in all of my hives. So the sacrifice of those drones that we just scraped on the hive cover behind on the ground here, in a way they're a sacrifice so that the rest of the bees can thrive. Because if, let's say I didn't do this, those Varroa mites that were in the capped brood would continue to thrive and exist in this hive and potentially to the devastation of all of the bees. So I would rather sacrifice a few drones for the greater good of the colony rather than not. This is a very similar method to using those green frames that you see in the catalogs that are specifically made for the queen to lay drone eggs in. And then you remove it at a specific stage in the drone bee development and stick it in the freezer. And it kills all the drones as well, but it also kills all the mites that are in that. But in this way, I'm able to collect valuable beeswax in the process of doing so. And it's not like that with those green drone Varroa control frames. So I'm gonna smoke these girls a little bit and work towards that other frame that I have out of position. We're gonna scrape the drone comb off of it and then put it where it should be, which is the second frame in. And the reason I do it on the second frame in is because I really don't want any worker brood on that frame. I'd rather be closer to the outside where they're likely to make it more of a honey frame, maybe pollen, but definitely the drone comb rather than worker brood. All right, so here we are, third frame in. They've drawn that out really well. On this particular one, none of this drone brood is capped. It's all open brood in the larval stage. And I could handle this in one of two ways. I could go ahead and scrape it, no doubt, taking a lot of mites with them. Or I could come back later after it's capped and know for sure that I've got even more mites that I'm removing. But since I've already got this hive open and I'm here and I don't know when I'll be back quite yet, I'm gonna go ahead and scrape this off. Now I'm gonna place the frame back in the <laughs> intended position of the second frame in. I'm gonna replace this one. And for my purposes today, this hive inspection is over and ideally, I would repeat this process through the rest of my apiary and I could leave knowing that I drastically reduced the count of Varroa mites in my beehives. Now again, this may or may not be something for you. If it is, leave me a comment below. Tell me if you like the idea, if you're gonna, if you plan on trying it, if you need more understanding of what's going on. If this is ethically not down your alley, 
definitely stick with other methods of Varroa control. And again, this is just one of four that I employ. Leave me your thoughts in the comments down below. Drop me one of these and tell your friends about the Hive Doctor. I'll see you in the next video.